We just want to take a quick break to speak about our sponsors for this video and podcast, Team Fipe. As you can see in the image here, some of the clubs that Team Fipe has acquired, Shamrock Rovers being the main one so far. Team Fipe is an easy to use online payment platform that covers management and administration, finance, club development, communication, governance and COVID track and trace. Club administrators save hours of time with Team Fipe, save time on administration and finance. You can quickly confirm, decline and record attendance at club sessions and events. With a new database created, parents and players register with the system which in turn creates and builds a player database for the club. Team groups can be easily set up for easy access to data. Real-time transaction updates. Team Fipe keeps club administrators or team managers updated on processed payments but also flags up incomplete transactions and automatically emails the payee to give notice of a future attempt. Team Fipe already works with over 1,000 leagues, clubs and academies and are growing all the time. Team Fipe is proud to be helping clubs across multiple sports. Team Fipe is free to use it's free to install by all of their members. There are no hidden fees, there is no sign up fee, no annual fee and no monthly membership fee. The processing fee, Team Fipe charge a very modest fee for any financial transaction that they process, similar to the bank or other credit card processor fees. Book your Zoom demo today at teamfipe.com or call on plus three five three one five two six seven four nine nine. Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. We're continuing on with our season previews. We're on to Longford Town now. I'm joined by Kieran Burke. Kieran is host of Between the Stripes, which is a League of Ireland podcast, which you probably know by now anyway. And he's also an ambassador. Well, can I say ambassador in this case for uh, heading the game? Uh, PRO. <laughs> PRO. So, yeah. uh, do you want to explain to people exactly? Well, firstly, where they can find Between the Stripes, what you're all about, and secondly, then about uh, heading the game, exactly what you do. Yeah, first of all, great to be on, Paul. Thanks very much. Uh, yourself and the lads doing great work for Irish football. So, um, Between the Stripes was set up back in 2016. It's hard to believe we're that long at it now. But uh, initially, it was actually just set up as a Longford Town kind of news blog. Um, because at the time, a lot of people felt maybe the club were just slightly lacking in the social media and the online side of things. It was very hard to get news. Players were coming and going and, and no one really knew. So, I tried to bridge that gap, but uh, luckily enough, then um, over the last couple of years since since James Donnelly came in, he's the media manager at the club. There's been huge progress made. So um, after probably a year or so, or even less, I decided to branch out the website to uh, the entire League of Ireland. Um, initially, it was just the, the Twitter and the Facebook and, and a small blog, but we've really developed developed since then. We've got a new website launching this week, and you'll be able to find our, our weekly podcast, which is probably what we're best known for. In truth, uh, the podcast is very very popular. Uh, this is our fifth series now. We're starting it tonight, actually, after I finished speaking to yourself. So uh, really looking forward to that. And uh, we've launched our, our own YouTube there in the last couple of years as well, Between the Stripes TV, just for video content and interviews and things like that. And we even had um, live match commentary for a while as well. But obviously with the stream and now watch LOI and that, there's no real need for us, which is, which is great. It's great to see the league making strides like that. But um, we've, I suppose we've just added something on, a layer of different coverage every, every year, let it be the YouTube or the live commentary or the podcast. And it's just continued to grow from there. So, uh, yeah, it's been a great ride. And uh, anyone that hasn't checked us out, feel free to do so. You'll find our podcast, Between the Stripes LOI podcast, on uh, any of the outlets, let it be Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your favourite shows. Yeah. Um, and I'll, well, who have you got on tonight, firstly, before I move on to heading again? Uh, we've got Aaron McInef joining us all the way over from Edinburgh. Of course, he's recently moved to Hearts from Shamrock Rover, so we're going to have a chat with Aaron ahead of the President's Cup. And uh, to get a bit of balance, of course, we had to get a Dundalk guest on. So Gary Rogers is going to join us. Uh, a man who, who simply won it all in Irish football and record European um, appearance holder as well in the League of Ireland. So great to uh, chat with Gary. And we've got Mark Hill as well, uh, who a lot of people might know for his work with uh, Football Manager, the, the computer game series. Uh, he kind of compiles the stats and the data for, for the Irish players. So uh, interesting story to him as well. A uh, good lineup. I had Aaron on the on the podcast uh, a couple of weeks ago as well. He's a great lad. So uh, And Gary is obviously as well. I know them both quite well. So... I'm sure uh, you're in store for a good show tonight. Just on the head in the game then, uh, this is a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's like an initiative to raise awareness for mental health. Uh, yeah, sometimes we juggle ourselves, what's the best way to describe it? But uh, we're not a charity is the first thing to state because a lot of people are always asking, how can we donate? We do do fundraisers, but usually we're fundraising to give the money then to somebody like um, a Pieta House or a Shine or... Yeah. 
uh, jigsaw group like that. Uh, so there will be fundraisers during the year. But the best way to describe ourselves, really, we're a mental health uh, advocacy group. So we're really just trying to promote positive mental health, uh, starting out initially within the League of Ireland. But obviously, as the group gets bigger, uh, we'd love to, to spread that out wider um, to, to a more national basis. But uh, we're, we're definitely starting out focusing on the, the League of Ireland. I suppose for anyone that doesn't really know the story of Head in the Game, uh, it was set up by a group of the dog fans last year after the uh, the sad passing of, of Harry Taff. Um, and obviously I'm living in Dundalk at the moment. I'm a Longford Town fan. I wouldn't have known Harry personally, but I obviously knew the story. It was very, very sad. So I suppose when I saw that group starting out off the back of that, I, I was always keeping an eye on them. And uh, you could see that the group was growing all the time. And recently they just had an application form up online to if anyone wants to, to join in and, and try and help us out, uh, get in touch. So I sent in my name and uh, particularly with my my background in social media and, and things like that, I thought I could bring something to the table in, in terms of trying to promote the group. So, um, yeah, as I said earlier, on the PRO there with, with Stefan McKevitt, who's who's a great lad, and we've had a very, very busy week because I'm sure a lot of your viewers will have seen the news about um, the draw of the United Stadium being renamed ahead in the game park. So we were working on that all of last week, working very hard to make sure it wasn't leaked by any media outlets or anything like that. So, uh, look, it was a fantastic gesture from, from Drogheda and um, that's just the first of many things down the line. We've got a nice little video package coming up before, hopefully before the start of the season. I can't say much more on that, but uh, I think League of Ireland fans will really enjoy it. And uh, yeah, if, if people want to check out Head in the Game, um, just search Head in the Game LOI on Facebook, Twitter or Instagram and you'll find us there. Well, there you go. There's obviously big things coming there. And Fair Play is this great work obviously being done. You see it all over social media. We follow your socials as well on that. So uh, keep up the good work. And obviously anyone who wants to get involved, as Kieran just said there, you know where to check them out. And they're on all platforms, Facebook, yeah. Twitter, Instagram. And you're probably on more than that as well. Yeah, and uh, we've got a website uh, in the pipe work as well. But as you know yourself, it's quite expensive and, and hard to, to develop. So uh, that's probably something a little bit further down the line. But even just to say, if there's anyone watching this video and you're feeling a little bit isolated because of the lockdown, because a lot of people are really struggling, particularly people that you know have their routine of going to the football every week with their same friends, their same mates, seeing the same faces, and they can't do that at the moment. Uh, and some people are a little bit more isolated than others. So if you're feeling like you need somebody to chat to, feel free to drop a message to the page some of the lads will have a chat with you and hopefully if 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 we need to direct you on somewhere else where we feel maybe you need to speak to somebody a bit more because we're the, the important thing to stress none of us are professionals we're not mental health experts um we are in the course of getting people like that on board so if someone does approach us and says look i need help we know exactly what to do and where to send them but um if anyone just wants to chat at all about anything or about nothing <laughs> Just send, uh, just drop us a message on any of those socials, and uh, the lads will be more than happy to to have a chat with yourself. Well, I think that's the good thing, isn't it? Because I think some people, if they're feeling low or they're feeling down, they might not want to talk, just talk to say, um, maybe you're a stranger to these people, but you're interested in football or exactly. something like that. Whereas if they're just texting someone, they may not be interested. They just texting you like generically, yeah. You know, asking open window questions. At least you just kind of have that thing in common straight away. The the football, at least. So that's something at least to get a conversation started. So I think it's good. I think everyone should go and check it out. But we said we get you on for Longford Town. I'm sure you're excited about the season ahead. Um, <laughs> I just want to talk about just last season, obviously coming up and stuff like that. But ha did you foresee at the start of the season, did you think that Longford were in for a shout of getting promoted? And how did you see the season panning out from the start to the break? And then obviously after COVID and kind of... Um, the lengths that you went obviously to get the club back up and running and as you mentioned you don't commentary on games and stuff like that because watch LOI came in and used it to stream games and stuff like that so do you want to tell us about kind of I know it's a bit of a long spiel there but if you can bring us back to the start of the season and then true um I'll go back to the first part of your question you asked me did I uh, was was I expecting Longford Town to be involved in a, in a promotion uh, shake up. I definitely was uh, with the players we brought in. I mean, uh, the bookmakers had Longford and Drogheda as the joint favourites to win the division last year. Um, it has to be remembered we actually finished fourth, which is kind of hard to believe that we finished fourth in a ten-team league and we still managed to get promoted. We were very, very inconsistent in the league, and that's why we fell away out of the title picture. Uh, and it was between Drogheda and Bray, and obviously Drogheda pit Bray to that one, and then. We went into the playoffs. I think we had lost. Our, we had we had lost our last three games going into the playoffs. And having been around these playoffs before with Longford and having watched them, I always thought, you know, you have to be going into these playoffs with momentum. We had absolutely no momentum behind us. So 
at the start of the season, yes, I expected us to go up because that's what the bookmakers were saying. It's what the pundits were saying. Looking at the players we had, that's what I was expecting. But I suppose halfway through the year, I was thinking, no, this is definitely not going to happen this year. But we got to the playoffs and uh, we were just a different animal in the playoff. We were so focused, no mistakes. We were, we were just brilliant in the playoffs. And uh, we're going to have to play like that every week if we're going to stay in the Premier Division. Yeah, well, obviously, I, I was quite upset um, with the way the playoffs went. Obviously, being a Shells fan and, and Luke Byrne getting sent off so quick, I just knew it was doomed from that point onwards. Obviously, a great deal for yourself and all your fans. But uh, f- from COVID, I suppose, um, just kind of breaking that down, because obviously, so many clubs are volunteers and stuff like that to try and keep the, the club afloat and stuff like that. How, how much of a struggle was it for Longford at, at that time, kind of coming back? Um, I suppose it was the same struggle as, as every other club. Obviously, you haven't got the uh, the money coming in the gate. Um, but as I said earlier on, the club's very, very lucky um, to have so many great volunteers and people with different skill sets as well. You can have lots of volunteers, but maybe somebody doesn't have a, an understanding of social media or something else, you know, administration, whatever it may be. Um, but Longford seemed to have a great spread of people, all with different backgrounds, all with different expertise. Um and I'm sure when clubs realised last season we're going to have to start streaming our games, that was probably a big concern for some clubs because they might not have had techie people within the club. But we were very, very lucky. We had a, a guy called Gary Riley who's um, hosting the podcast with me this year alongside John Breyer. And um, Gary is just an absolute wizard, <laughs> an absolute wizard with technology. So he put that all into place. And as I said, James there, the media manager, he was already recording the games, but more so just for highlights packages. But uh, he's quite techy himself, obviously, been the media manager. So the two of them came together. Um, I came on board with Tony G to do commentary and uh, it, it worked an absolute treat. So we were very, very lucky in that regard. And even over the last couple of weeks, the club, it, it sounds like very small. I'm sure the Dawk and Rovers fans are probably listening to what I'm about to say now and they'll be like, what's the big deal about that? But from a Longford point of view, this is the type of thing fans have been asking for for years and it's finally starting to happen. We have the online lotto. It's a, you can finally play the lotto online. So that's fantastic because obviously the way it was done before was it was sold in the town in shopping centres and, and places like that. You can't do that uh, during COVID, obviously. So to have the option to go online as a fan and buy a lotto ticket and feel like I'm supporting the club, that's fantastic. And for a long time as well, fans were very, very frustrated about the lack of merchandise. Uh, there was a small shop out at the ground. A lot of the time you'd go out, there wouldn't be an awful lot of gear in it. You couldn't get it online. You couldn't go into a shop in the town and get it. Whereas now the club has signed um, a deal with Elvery's. You can walk into the Elvery's in Longford. The town gear is there on display, which isn't just great from a fan's point of view, but it's really good PR for the club as well for it to be front and central and, and the, the gear to be there for everyone to see. And uh, it sold really, really well over Christmas. And uh, it's now available online as well, which is absolutely brilliant for fans living away. And uh, our season tickets are online now as well. So the club has just made huge strides in the last couple of years. Well, that, that's brilliant. Obviously, the fact that now fans can get the gigs. There's nothing worse than when you want to buy something and there's nothing there. Or you go to the shop and they haven't got your size and you're, yeah. you're wondering when they can order it back in and stuff like that. So it's great. It's, as you say, it's it strides forward, I think, for Longford, but also for Irish football. I think people at the kind of higher level are starting to kind of get it now and, and start mm-hmm. let, actually letting people like yourself and myself, these types of people who are creative and actually have an idea about social media because I felt like it was kind of blocked off for so long yeah. that people just didn't want any sort of new... People were so comfortable in their old ways that they weren't going to let these new people come in. But now you're seeing it with every club. Every club uh, has brilliant uh, people. I'm not involved with the club, but I'm talking about what we could do, like away from maybe highlights and stuff like that to kind of raise awareness for Irish football or something like that. I think the rise in that has obviously helped all the teams and all Irish football and it's starting to kind of bring it out to a wider audience, not just in Ireland because, you know, YouTube channels and stuff like that, you're able to watch them anywhere in the world, whereas obviously with RTE, you can only watch it in, say, on the player or, you know, in Ireland and stuff like that. But that's I think that's great that it's, it's starting to kind of bring things forward and obviously... The people that you mentioned there, I think Jay does a great job in, in terms of just even promoting Longford online yeah, really. on Twitter. Every time I go onto his page, it's always something or he's got a new idea or something like that. So so shout out to everyone who's doing really good work there and continuing continuing to do it, sorry, like yourself with the podcast for uh, League of Ireland and stuff like that as well. Because it, it is needed because without it, um, as you say, it's just, it will get absolutely no coverage whatsoever. Yeah, look, I have to agree with you. That, uh, as you said, there's more kind of there's a lot of podcasts popping up there at the minute, but it's great. Like, uh, I, I think people that are involved with podcasts, like when I see a new one launching, I'm not thinking, 
damn, they're going to take my listeners away. I'm thinking, this is brilliant. This is another podcast for me to listen to because I that's all I listen to in the car. I don't listen to music. I always have a podcast on or a documentary or something like that. Herself just be given out, like, turn that off, put some music on. But uh, I love listening to, to particularly League of Ireland podcasts. So it's great that there is so many out there. And as you said, YouTube channels and all the rest, it, it, it's great to see it really, really grow. Yeah, well, we'll just we'll talk about your players that have left Longford now anyway. And um, we're going to move around that, that way. So Andrew Dempsey who I've shouted out on every video I've done so far because of his list is brilliant yeah. on uh, the football the football scope.blogspot.com. I always make a mistake when I'm reading Yeah, I, I gave him a shout out actually on my social media today because uh, as I said, I'm prepping for my first show of the season tonight and I've actually got the list printed out in front of me. It's, it's a brilliant tool, so just... Yeah, well, I, I'll, I'll just read them out to you and then you you, you can say them back to me what how you're kind of feeling about them. So James English left, he's uh, gone to Airfield United. Eric Abul has gone to Ballymun United. Dylan Han's gone to <coughs> Atlone Town. Uh, Noel Barnes gone to Cabin Tealy and Adam Evans has gone to Warren Point Town. Now there may be someone or uh, a few people missing off that list because on some of them there was, but I think in this case that's that's more or less up to date. Uh, to be honest, I, I think Dara and the club kept everyone they wanted to keep. The one name there I probably would have liked to maybe uh, stick around because I, I thought he was a real um, a real workhorse and he had little bits of quality. He was probably unlucky with injuries. Adam Evans um, was was very good towards the end of last season, so. And he has a little bit of Premier experience, which is something we're really lacking. That's something I am concerned about this season is the lack of uh, top flight experience in the squad. So Adam would have had a little bit of that. But uh, look, he's, he's moved on to Warren Point, which is a great club. Um, so best of luck to him. Uh, the rest of the lads there that you mentioned, uh, I don't think uh, they were probably ready for the step up. Uh, James English left halfway through last year anyway. Um, so he, he was already gone, but um, so did Eric as well. He left early on. He was a young player coming in from the, the Rovers 19s and uh, he played a couple of pre-season games and he looked very good and confident on the ball, but just positionally, you could tell he was really lacking experience and he probably just wasn't ready to step into senior men's League of Ireland football. Uh, Dylan Hand as well is, is a really high potential player. I think a year, another year in the first division where he'll play week in, week out with a club like Athlone. I definitely think we haven't seen the last of Dylan Hand uh, just because he wasn't kept on by Longford, I don't think that's any indictment on him. Uh, I just don't think he was just ready yet because he was coming in from Dundalk, of course, last year, where he, he wouldn't have had a huge amount of opportunities because of the quality of that Dundalk squad. And uh, he showed glimpses for Longford, but at times then he did show his inexperience as well. So I think a year with loan uh, will do him the world of good. But overall, uh, Darrod Oil did very, very well to keep the, the core of last season's squad together. Yeah, well, I suppose we'll move on to to the re-sign and kind of who you're most happy about kind of keeping around. So we've got Sam Verdon, Carl Chambers, Shane Elworthy, um, Rob Manley, Dean Byrne, John Manley, Mick McDonnell, Aaron McNally, Dylan Grimes, Aaron McCabe, Dean Zambra, Joe Gorman, Lee Stacey, Luke Dennison, Matthew O'Brien, Callum Warfield, E. Dervin, Thomas McLaughlin and Ben Lynch. Happy to keep them all, in truth. Um, nearly every person you named there played it. Part, at some stage last season in the promotion um, the one Longford fans they'll all tell you they were very very concerned about losing and there was a little bit of a saga for a couple of weeks where was it on was it off A. Durvin, um anyone that's listened to my podcast or any kind of Longford Town streams or anything you'll know the the regard A is held in uh, obviously a little bit of that has to do with the fact yes he is a local lad which is very rare at Longford Town um, but he is just an absolutely phenomenal player he has an engine like a Boeing 747. He just does not stop. Um, but aside from that, a lot of people kind of associate him with being nitty gritty and breaking up play. But when he actually gets on the ball, he can pick a pass. Uh, he would like to, to add more goals to his game. That's something even when I've spoken to him, he said, you know, I would like to add more uh, goals to my game. But I think that will come with experience. And uh, the fact this year he's going to have uh, Aaron Bulger and Aaron Robinson playing in behind him. I think he'll probably have a more of an attacking role in the team. So we might see him start to maybe get five or six goals a season. But I think if A can have a really solid season with us this year, um, I think the world is his oyster. I think he can go absolutely anywhere. He really is a phenomenal footballer. Yeah, well, as you said, he seems to be quite loved there. I think he commented that when we were looking for long for players to come on, I think he commented messing with, uh, on on the post, messing, saying, get this person on. I think it might have actually been a player. But oh, yeah. He's, 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 he's a bit of a messer on social media. <laughs> yeah. Well, just talk to me. Talk to me about uh, your signings and who you're kind of most excited about seeing. So you've got Callum Thompson from Bray, Paddy Kirk from Bowes, Aaron Dobbs from Shells, Connor Davis from Cork City, Aaron Robinson from Bluebell. I actually, know Aaron very well. Uh, Aaron Bolger, 
Michael Kelly and Aaron O'Driscoll. Yeah, I'll actually start with Aaron since, since you know him so well. Um, when he signed, um, I think it's fair to say a lot of fans, no disrespect to him, were like, who? And then they looked and he was coming from Bluebell and they're like, we're in the League of Ireland Premier Division. That's going to be a huge step up. But um, I was lucky enough to commentate on the first game up in UCD. Uh, UCD were, were kind enough to let Longford go up and stream that day. And he was absolutely phenomenal. And um, I wasn't at the next couple of pre-season games against Cabin Tealy and Cove, but again, the reports were very positive. And um, I think Longford fans now are actually getting very, very excited about Aaron Robinson in the midfield because he looks like a bit of a box-to-box player. He's very good at breaking up the play. Um, but when he gets on the ball, he's always looking forward for a pass and he just looks very dynamic in there. And even though we got promoted last season, there was times where our, our midfield did look a little bit um, static at times. It didn't have that real energy. Um, so I think Robinson going in there and having um, a little terrier alongside him like Bulger, I think that's a good steely uh, centre to the team. I've already mentioned Ed Irvin playing a little bit higher up. Um, in terms of the the other signings, um, Another one that town fans had mixed feelings about in truth was Aaron Dobbs because Aaron was with us previously and um, despite getting an awful lot of minutes, he, his goal return was very, very poor. He went to Shelburne, as you'll know, last season and again, he was far from prolific. Shelburne were, were relegated but I have to say he's been absolutely phenomenal in pre-season. I think he's scored uh, three or four goals now uh, but aside from that, his hold-up play has been excellent and uh, he, he just never gives up. He chases down every ball so him playing off someone like a Rob Manley or a Connor Davis who's come in as well. And connor has been really unlucky with injuries at the likes of Cork and Derry. So it's a chance for him to show what he can do now. Um, I think we've got loads of options up front and loads of options in midfield. Callum Thompson is probably the one that really excites me. And uh, I was at a press conference a couple of weeks ago with Dara Doyle and I asked him of the signings, what's the one that's going to get the fans on the edge of their seat? And Callum Thompson, he, he was straight in there throwing his name into the ring. So, um, and from what I've seen of him pre-season, and I haven't seen him last year with Bray, where he absolutely destroyed us in a couple of games. Uh, I'm really, really excited about him. If he can get some good delivery into the likes of Dobbs and Manley, I think we'll be okay in the attacking part of the pitch and the middle third. I Honestly, I, I would be slightly concerned at the back. Uh, if we do pick up injuries there, we might be just uh, lacking in a couple of areas, and that's where you're really going to be um, found out in the Premier Division. If you make mistakes at the back, uh, you're, you're in trouble. Yeah, just going back to, to Aaron, um, he did just play with Cabo. And... Yeah, you'll have to be more precise. We actually have six Aarons in the town team this year. Sorry, Aaron Robinson. <laughs> um, but yeah, he, he played with, with Cabin Teeley and then I think he went to Blue po- Bluebell. Sorry. Um, but Richie Town actually came from Bluebell to Dundalk. So there exactly. you go. Yeah, I actually made that point on commentary a couple of weeks ago. I said, despite the fact he's coming from non-league, Longford Town in particular have done very, very well down the years, even going all the way back to Stephen Kenny's days. Uh, he picked up um, players from the non-league who did very, very well and became cult heroes at the club. And more recently, probably the, the most famous example now uh, of the last couple of years at Longford, Davy O'Sullivan. He came from Wayside Celtic um, in the just before the 2013 season. He was our top scorer. We got to the playoff final and we lost. And then again, uh, he scored 20-plus goals uh, the next season as we won the first division. And uh, he became the club's all-time leading goal scorer in just three years. So uh, he was an absolutely phenomenal find out of the out of the Leinster Senior League. So if, if Aaron Robinson could do half as well as that, we'd be very, very happy. Hmm. Well, you saw Celtics have shown you up the road for me there. But uh, yeah, um, just we, we always kind of finish on a, like a preview of what position you think Longford <laughs> will finish. Now, we usually kind of do it with like a, a head over heart or heart over head. So you can give me whichever you feel first. And then obviously where you actually think honestly... Uh, Longford will finish where you would like to, fi- to finish firstly and then where you think they will actually uh, I know I know the likes of Ed Irvin will be watching this and he'll, he'll snap me in half now when I say this but um, uh, look going with the heart first uh, I think everyone knows stepping up from the uh, the first division no matter who you are it's it's a huge huge ask it's a, um, even even though we always see first division teams upsetting premier teams in the cup and, and like Longford beating Shells last year there is the odd example but I mean playing 36 games as opposed to 27, playing maybe three games a week and then having cup competitions on top of that. It's it's a huge ask, uh, particularly for a part-time team like Longford are. I know they train almost as if they are a full-time team and everything they do is 100%, 110% professional to the T, but it's still a huge ask physically, particularly for, as I said, a young team where there's not a huge amount of, of Premier Division experience. So if we could just finish above the bottom two, that would be absolutely fantastic. But... Um, in truth, I think we're probably going to maybe have to play a playoff again this year. Um, if we can avoid bottom spot, 
it's it's a bonus. Um, I'm not going in really with any expectations because uh, last year was just such a thrill. Uh, the playoffs was was unbelievable. Uh, nobody thought we were going to get promoted, as I said, because we were so inconsistent. We fell down to fourth. We actually lost on the final day of the season against Wexford, and only for results going um, our way elsewhere, we wouldn't have made the playoffs. We only got in by the skin of our teeth. Uh, and that's why I had no confidence at all when we went into those three games. But we did it, and the team showed what they can do under pressure. Uh, and they played some really good football as well, which should be remembered. I think Longford will bring a really good brand of football to the Premier Division. But um, I'm not going in with any expectations. For me, it's a bonus to be in the Premier Division. It's great to be up there mixing it with the best of the best. And hopefully the fans will be able to get in this this year and we can enjoy trips to the likes of Tala and, and Oriel and Daly Mountain and see the big names in action. But um, yeah... <laughs> As I said, I'm not going in with any expectations. Well, I think, you know, what, what you're saying there is correct. And I think, you know, from from a Longford point of view, if if they can manage to, to stay up and maybe try and establish themselves. I know I had uh, Luke on from Drogheda and he was saying the same thing. He, his ideal scenario would be just to stay up, establish themselves in the Premier Division for a season and then build on it and add more quality players next season. I think that would be an ideal scenario for Longford. Um, building on to next summer um, if these players can get a year's experience in the Premier Division and do well uh, see it's all I, I think it's all about momentum because you look at like Shells going into Covid they were on a good run coming yeah. back in it was kind of a good run but then it just went boom, and then there was no fans there to kind of to help that momentum and it was literally like a, just a downward spiral into the Longford game and I don't think any Shells fan kind of knew but I think it, it is kind of all about momentum and I think if you can have the fans as part of that, I think Shell suffered massively without the fans. Um, their players definitely did. Sometimes you just need that drive just to keep you going for the last 15 minutes or whatever. I think if Longford can get that, maybe at the second half of the season, if fans are allowed back in, obviously we're all hoping that that, that is the case. Um, I think that could be a big, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A big a big part to play for you. Yeah, it's actually funny you should mention the the kind of the mood in in the shells camp or whatever because uh, as I said going into them playoffs I had no real confidence that we'd beat UCD that we'd beat Galway but once we got into the playoff final against Shelburne um, their manager Ian Morris started making a couple of comments in the media uh, he he had a bit of a pop at um, Dara Doyle for sending staff up to watch uh, watch the final game of the season against Shamrock Rovers he was like what what are you going to learn from that watching Shamrock Rovers who have all the possession against a team like Shelburne and I remember saying on our podcast I said that man is rattled he is under pressure and there was little noises coming out of the camp at the time and it just didn't seem like all was right and within five minutes of that game kicking off in Richmond Park that day between Longford and Shells I knew Longford were going to win that day because they were first at every ball there was a real bite about them and Shells were just flat as a pancake there was nothing about them that day uh, I know Longford didn't create a huge amount of chances, but they did miss that penalty in the first half, and then eventually they got their goal. And bar a couple of late rallies at the end from Shells, Longford never looked like they were going to lose that game. So, uh, yeah, it's amazing how momentum can can swing in football. Literally, I think that just shows you uh, how much it can it can swing. But uh, this to finish on that note, I don't want to talk any more about that playoff game. It's just like a nightmare, so we won't talk about that anymore. But uh, listen, it's been great having you on. Continue the good work with Between the Stripes. Continue the good work with Head in the Game as well. And good luck in your podcast tonight with uh, the lads that you have on. Again, if you want to just give it a, a quick plug so where people can find Between the Stripes and Head in the Game, just in case uh, they missed it at the start. But Yeah, first of all, uh, th- thanks again, for Paul, for having me on. Really enjoyed the chat, I have to say. Uh, and keep up the good work yourself. Yourself and the lads doing great stuff there. Um, if you want to find uh, Between the Stripes on social media, at Between Stripes is the Twitter handle. And if you search Between the Stripes on Facebook and Instagram, you'll find us there. And there is a new website uh, coming out in the next couple of days, hopefully. So just keep an eye on our socials for that. And uh, in terms of the podcast, it's Between the Stripes LOI podcast. You'll find it on any of the providers. And Between the Stripes TV is our YouTube channel. And just, just head in the game then, lastly. Yeah, uh, perfect. Head in the game on Twitter. It's um, at head in the game 20. Uh, but if you search head in the game LOI, you should find it as well. And uh, head in the game LOI will find us on Facebook and Instagram. And as I said, hopefully down the line, we'll have a website as well. So just uh, follow us on socials and you can keep up to date with uh, all the latest news. And again, if uh, just because the application forms, uh, they've closed or whatever, doesn't mean we're still not looking for people to come on board. If you think you could bring something to the table, uh, as I said, myself and the lads, none of us are mental health experts, but we've all got little bits of skills. Like some lads there are good with social media. Other lads are good at 
other things. So uh, we're all just bringing little bits to the table and we have a, a committee meeting every couple of weeks. So if there's someone out there that would like to get involved, we'd absolutely love to hear from you. Yeah, perfect. Um, guys, get, get over there, check it out. Don't forget to, to check out Between the Stripes. Don't forget to check out Head in the Game on all the socials and feel free to drop them a message as well if you need anything in that regard. Uh, tell us what you think of Longford's transfers in the comments. Where do you think they'll finish up? Do you agree with Kieran or what do you think? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll speak to you all soon. Thanks for watching. The IFF TV Podcast, presented by Paul Nealon. Like, rate and subscribe.